fulfilling human flourishing. Therefore, only I can generate links into his standard. My links into his standard will always outweigh his links into his standard because I'm actually fostering virtue and allowing humans to flourish. So, specifically, off the um, off the oppression stuff above Iron. First, they're not actually oppressive. It's an ideal. If it's an ideological oppression, there's no actual oppression. If humans are not stopping flourishing. This is going to be damning to the entirety of the perverted case. If humans are not actually oppressed, not actually stopping flourishing, there's actually going to be no impacts back to human flourishing. Remember, this is about allowing humans to achieve their ends. If, ideal, if it's an ideological oppression, then they can still achieve their ends because they're not actually being oppressed. There's, there, there, there's this like semblance of oppression because the system was created to be like rehabilitated and keep kids off the street or whatever. His argument is saying, however, they're not actually being oppressed. They're not actually being stopped fulfilling their function. And second, and, and second, it's okay. If uh, it's okay if there's some oppression. If I'm showing that I increase you. In the long run, I'm showing that I increase human flourishing in the long run. It's okay if there is some pressure coming out of the negative world because the uh, because the goal is increasing human flourishing. And even if there is some pressure, we can still increase human flourishing. There's no reason why oppression is going to take out human flourishing. This is a link that Daniel absolutely needs. It's all of his arguments linked back to oppression. I'm giving you very clear links to why virtue, fostering virtue, is going to is, is going to increase human is, is going to increase human flourishing because a virtuous person is what a human is supposed to be. And we're talking about the ends of what humans are supposed to be. This is always reason to prefer my links into the affirmative standard. Now it goes specifically to the Greenberg or. Er, now prove the entirety of the contention about how the system is oppressive. First, turn the adult penal system is more oppressive because juveniles, but, uh, but because juveniles are forced to go into adult court and, and, and forced to be punished as adults were for their action. They are punished. They are not helped. The juvenile system they are actually rehabilitated, whereas the adult system they are actually oppressed and coerced and violence used to like stop uh, to stop them from taking their action. Second, turn again, even if it's not oppressive, even if the criminal system is not oppressive overall, specifically oppressive to juveniles because they are thrown in the system with uh, with adults who are fully who are fully grown and who are like part of criminals and they can like teach them how to become criminals in the long run. So it's ultimately going to be detrimental to human flourishing. Um, uh, it's ultimately going to be detrimental to human flourishing. All those arguments are just talking about how there's social control and not masking penal institutions. However, the juvenile justice system is, is, not, is not penal, it is actually a rehabilitative system. My counter plan actually bolsters its rehabilitative benefits. The juvenile justice system always rehabilitates more than the ass system. So, I mean, only when they can actually link to increasing human flourishing, he's actually increasing oppression as well as decreasing human flourishing for all the reasons that come out of the end. Can I see the Constitution stuff? Well, actually, can I just see what you read? I passed. This is the Constitution. Okay, okay. Awesome. I'll bracket I'll off on it. Awesome. I, I, we can start for now. There's no violation yet, right? So if I don't go for the Constitution arguments, there's no violation. Yep. If okay. you don't go for Constitution, you do not. Okay. Can I see the party you'll mark? Yeah, I'm just going to mark it. You didn't read the charge analysis, right? Um, no, I didn't read anything about charge. Okay. Depending on punishment is great. Okay. Awesome. So then, uh, let's talk about your arguments on the Constitution. Why do we have to follow the Constitution? I didn't read anything about it. My argument is that the United States government is specifically obligated to follow the Constitution. Why? Given its nature as an agent, the United States government agreed in a contractual relationship when it wrote the Constitution that this is how it's going to act and this is how it's going to present. Why is that relevant? Why is that linked to my epistemic framework? Um, like, first of all, it doesn't need to link it to your epistemic framework. Why I'm not? I'm talking about a moral obligation. I'm talking about the government's descriptive obligations because my argument is that obligations have to be specific. What's the distinction between my arguments talk about government's ethical obligations? Why is your argument? Okay, cool. Mine. My arguments talk about the government's contractual obligations. What's like the, the distinction? Because the distinction? Right? my arguments are my argument is specific to the obligation of the U.S. government specifically as an agent. My, and I'm more specific. Constitution has a historical context. Yeah, that's well. That's my second. That's my first response. My second response okay. is that I don't need a historical context. Why? If I do, why don't you need one? Okay. The reason I don't need a historical context. Is what is what? How do you refute the warning ground? Huh? Okay, that assumes you win that my yeah. epistemic framework is relevant, right? If if you win that ought is a moral obligation, then I need an epistemic whatever. Okay. So, so at that point, if I've met that, then the only answer to the Graham evidence in the epistemic framework is that the Constitution is historical, right? Yep. Okay. Then let's talk about, so what does Harstis 2 say? Or okay. Har Harstis. Yeah, Harstis. Harstis 2 says that in order to actually achieve eudaimonia, we need to be virtuous. I, I paste it here. If you want me to paste okay. the rest of what I read in that document, I will. It's made it easier for you. Okay. But no. Harstis 2 says that in order to flourish humanly and flourish in a character, or in order to achieve eudaimonia, sorry, I'm confused with the in order to achieve eudaimonia, we need to be virtuous because the people who act according to virtues are the most happy people. Okay. It's just an independent justification for virtue ethics. Over What's the distinction things? between allowing people to pursue their own ends and allowing people to pursue vir like their virtue or to act in virtue? virtue are their ends. The virtues are Okay, their so ends. why does that 
what is your argument? Like, how does that function in relation to my argument? Okay, okay. sure. So all of the framework arguments I read and all the first class arguments right. I read are about how how does that indict my approach? Even if you win enti the entirety of the oppression debate, right. what's most important for human flourishing is increasing virtue. So okay. even if you win 100% link on oppression, if I show that we're increasing virtue despite of the oppression, that's sufficient to negate because that's what's actually the function of humans. Okay, awesome. I'll start back. Here, I will just copy and paste the rest of what I read into this. Okay. Do you unconditionally defend the counterpoint? Huh? Do you unconditionally defend the counterpoint? I mean, I'd say it's dispositional, but I'll defend it the way you would defend like a contention of your AC. Like, okay, if you win the like if you beat that, that counterpoint, if I turn the counterpoint, counterpoint. If you turn the counterpoint, I have to answer turns. Okay. That's fine. Thanks. I Unless I like win the constitution framework, in which case they wouldn't link. Right? Okay. Like, I have to answer turns or win a precluding framework. Okay. So the, the things you marked, you didn't I didn't read it. anything in blue, so, okay. Sorry, that's fine. Here's the theory if you want. No. Okay. So the justification is that you would get a link to ought? It's the only one? Yeah, it's just like okay. I have uh, 145 left. Top of the AC. I think we are going to go to the counterplan at some point, but maybe not. We'll see. I'll sign this down, it should be clear. Okay? Ready? Okay. James does not understand the nuance of the approach case. I'm going to be excluding all of his office because none of his relevance for him. He's not responding to Graham evidence properly. First, he's sent the young evidence that said the universal objective position not exists. Position is always occupied by a particular position, but then Graham contextualized that by saying that our position is all rooted material production, so I include every aspect of life, which is not merely historical context, it's historical context that has to do with the way our resources, the way we achieve, we get our resources within the mode of production, which is capitalism with link, for example, because it has to do with the way we achieve our uh, uh, our, our, our sustenance. But he's, uh, his arguments don't link. Remember, the only response he has to the question is that the Constitution is historical. First of all, the Constitution is a universal. 
universal construct. He says, says we always have to follow these types of contractual obligations. He says the linked odd means the other is the universal concepts. My argument is my argument can't be universal because has to be used within the social context. My argument is that the Constitution never applied that but argument also. So, all, 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 so that means that it's first of all extending the Constitution's argument. The Constitution is based on the duty. And that also extending the counterclaim. The counterclaim is not linked to the fact that it's a historical context. He's been with the counterclaim after, but he's not linked to the historical conditions that analyze rehabilitation before. Then, go to the arguments. I'll get to go to Brainerd. Ethics and Brainerd, that's just because of the real life experiences of people. That's the 